but I wouldn't mind being a horror filmmaker for the rest of my life. I love the genre so much. It's my, it's my first love. Uh, and I would be, I listen, I would be honored to just make terrifier movies for the rest of my life. You know, I don't take any of this for granted. <laughs> So uh, from the Terrifier short film to All Hallows Eve to now a third Terrifier movie, when Art the Clown first started catching on, did you even allow yourself to dream of this kind of success? But I'm always dreaming, right? You, you always dream. You hope that something like this happens. But uh, do you really believe it's going to happen? Probably. Probably not. Uh, I do tell people, though, because I have to be honest, when I made the second short film with Art the Clown, which was called Terrifier, I really believe that there was something there with the character. I thought there was something special. And that's one of the reasons why I've been sort of, you know, sticking with him this entire time. I mean, that was a long time ago. I created him in 2005, right? We're going into 2024. Um, and it was just, he was sort of my North Star. I knew as a horror fan, just instinctually, there was something special there. And I just wanted to eventually get him in front of as many eyes as possible. God, don't! Don't come near me! Please don't! No, no, no! Well, and the cast from Terrifier 2 is really taken to the horror world doing a ton of conventions. And so was it always the intention to continue following these characters or was it more of the fan reaction that's necessitated that? No, once once I uh, wrote Sienna, Sienna was actually Sienna played by the amazing Lauren Levera. When I um, there was I tried to make a film a long time ago with a character um very similar to Sienna. I mean, identical uh, visually. Like I always, I always had that sort of archetypal look of the the angel Valkyrie um, mm -hmm. that I wanted to put into a slasher. But the character ex itself changed over over time. But that was something I tried to do. Um, the project wound up failing, so I put that character away, and I was always waiting for the right time to dig her up again. Jonathan, run! Um. So, so yeah, so once I, um, once I went into writing Terrifier 2, I said, now's the time to really give Art a worthy opponent, a worthy adversary, and it's time for me to dig up this, uh, this character. And that's who I, you know, eventually I named her Sienna and I fleshed her out. And um, she's my, uh, she's the heart and soul. and She's my hero. She's my favorite character. And I'm really curious too. Yeah. So is there any uh, dream kill that you've cooked up that you just haven't been able to practically pull off because all your stuff is so realistic that is there just something where you're like, ah, we just haven't been able to to nail that yet? Yes, there is. Um, I, I guess I could say this. I can't say whether or not it'll be in uh, Terrifier 3, but I always wanted to do a seamless uh, decapitation, just like a slow one in one in one take uh and and we try to do that because the only way you can do that is a marriage of practical effects and the effects if you mm -hmm. want it to look very realistic i mean you could do it any way you want to but uh to really just have your actor there reacting and blinking and screaming and seeing their head chopped off and then just the head ta taken away i mean we were so close to nailing it in the costume shop um murder that's costume shop decapitation but, uh, you know, that fake head was just jumping around so much. It was very difficult to map the actor's head onto it without it looking a little too jarring. So we had to, we had to cut it up, uh, pun intended. <laughs> but, uh, I love the so, behind so the scenes is, footage from that particular scene because it just shows how much fun you guys had on set. Action grab. There we go. Three, two, one, pull. Yes when you have these big kills, because when we made the first one with the hacksaw scene, everybody who read the script said, well, that's the scene. I mean, that's that's the movie. That's the scene everybody's going to be talking about. How, how are you going to do that? Are you actually going to show all that? So then I we made the alley bedroom kill. And I I mean, that's the scene that has people you know, passing out or leaving them. That's when that's when Terrified 2, you know, separates <laughs> the men from the boys, so to speak. Right. <laughs> that's the that's the moment where you either love the movie or you get up and walk, walk out. I remember having meetings with people. I, I got to meet with studios like legit Hollywood studios who wanted to make Terrifier 3, but before I even had a script, just based on the success of uh, part two, and just having meetings and getting the feel that I was going to have eyes over my shoulders and they were concerned 
talked about the levels of gore and this and that. I knew, and not not having seen my script or have any idea what I have in mind, I knew they weren't going to let me make this movie based on the first five pages. Like, that's how insane Terrifier 3 is, the first, like, five minutes of this movie. A studio would never let me film what I plan on filming, right? So mark my words, I guarantee you the first five minutes of this movie is going to be very controversial. But that's not even the big kill scene. So, like, that's why I was like, I need to just make this movie uh, on my own because it's just too, it's too insane. So who would you say are your biggest uh, who would you say your biggest influence influences are when it comes to practical effects? Because it seems like there's a lot of Tom Savini in there. It's all it's all Tom Savini. You nailed it. He's my oh, my God. Poor guy. Every time I see him or every time uh, I do an interview, I'm I'm mentioning him. Uh, I got to just do a panel with him, him. And this was insane. I didn't even know this was happening until I got there, that uh, there was a director panel and it was me. Tom Savini and Greg Nicotero, right? Those are two of my biggest heroes of all time, but like legit heroes. I mean, the way the way somebody would admire a, a sports athlete or you, know, you name it, just like a rock star, like somebody they would have like on their wall, like to me that, that that's Tom Savini. That's how much that guy influenced me because I discovered uh, I discovered his VHS tape called scream greats when i was a little kid and it was the first time i ever saw what a makeup artist did and that's when i knew i wanted to do that for the rest of my life so um so now getting to do a panel where we're sort of peers now uh which i don't look at it that way uh you know but uh that was such a kind of full full circle moment to have been inspired by that guy and just like i'm always paying tribute to him in my movies all right, so we have a wax replica of Sarah, hollow head filled with goat brains, uh, <laughs> fat, blood filled condoms, some silicone, a couple of eyeballs, and uh, old Pontsylvania trick. And hopefully, uh, this is really fucking nasty. First director where I was like, oh, wow, like this is a director. This is a. This is uh, an identifiable style was Martin Scorsese when I really started getting into film. He that was the first style I actually fell in love with it because it was just like there was like a rock star behind the camera and he was sort of starring in his own movies. He's, he's going to put a technique in there that you're going to be forced to to feel at some point. You're going to you're going <laughs> to where it could be a swoosh pan or like a fast zoom or a, a voiceover or this beautiful long take or just just his thumb his thumbprint is just all over his work and i was like wow that's how much influence a filmmaker can have on the style anyway you know what reminds me i need this knife i'm gonna take this it's okay okay yeah I just need it for bring a it while. back though you know so i'm curious away from the the uh terrifier franchise what else are you interested in exploring in the like in the filmmaking space uh that's a good question man um again like so i love um every every movie that i would ever want to make would have to be some sort of some sort of intense crime driven film on some on some level those are Mm -hmm. the things because i i love all movies all movies comedies i mean i'll watch a rom-com you like i if it's good i could uh i could appreciate it i just love film but the ones to me that are, you know, for worth that, that I could bring anything to the table are just, you know, it's horror, it's action, it's it's sci-fi, it's movies like Taxi Driver or Clockwork Orange. You know, if I ever segued into other genres, it would be the way, hopefully, the, the way sort of David Cronenberg's career has uh has evolved, right? He started making very low budget sort of schlocky horror movies in Canada that are very, you know, very heavy exploitation movies. Mm -hmm. And then you just see him grow over over the span of his career. And then he's making Oscar nominated movies and he's making movies like um, Eastern Promises and History of Violence, Uh, you know, like really, those are the things that, that interest me. And those are the kind of stories I would like to tell outside of the horror genre. Well, and I'm sure you can't get into too much detail, but people are dying to know what can they expect from Terrifier 3? Yeah, well, you're going to see, you're certainly going to see how her and her brother, Jonathan, played by the great Elliot Fulham, how they react to the just the, the events of Terrifier 2 and how they're dealing with this, this unimaginable trauma, basically. Um how they're how they're coping with it or not coping with it how they're not dealing with it um and uh and now really really exploring the supernatural 
the supernatural entity that has resurrected art and all these supernatural happenings, all these questions that were brought up in part two that have people scratching their heads and just being like, <laughs> what is going on in this crazy, this crazy world with all this, this sort of, you know, mystical supernatural stuff happening. So really, really explaining that uh, to the audience is going to be fun. But at the same time, shifting tonally back to the original terrifier, because I think one of the big mistakes a lot of franchises make is they 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 lose their way and they forget what made what made this uh, their franchises work in the first place, right? So I think if I just keep straying far further and further away from the original Terrifier, I think that's a big uh, that's a bad move. Uh, so I want to sort of recapture that gritty, simplistic Grindhouse style, that really dark, gritty nature of terrifier mm -hmm. um and sort of now blend that more with uh with terrifier too so i want art to be the scariest you've ever seen him and the just like the most sinister even though he's still gonna be his you know quirky funny self you know yeah. you can't lose that the levity and the the charm of art the clown is is essential to his character but you, you will see that this is going to be the scariest and the the darkest of uh of the trilogy so far